This is Luke from Emo Electric, and we're here today to talk about shaft length for the e-propulsion Spirit motors. This is a super common question that we get, and if you decide that you're going to buy one of these motors, you will need to figure out your shaft length. Uh, fortunately, we have this video, and e-propulsion also has written up a really great shaft length guide that we'll link in the description here. So between this and that, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out which shaft length you need. So we've got the extra short shaft to my left. In the middle here, we have the short shaft. And then all the way on the right, we have uh, the long shaft. So one thing to bear in mind is that if you're interested in the Spirit 1.0 Plus, that's kind of the base model of the Spirit with the built-in tiller, you can get either of these three shaft sizes. If you're gonna go with the Spirit Evo, which is the upgraded version, it's actually the one we have here, uh, where you can use the remote throttle or the tiller and has a couple extra features that does not come in an extra short shaft so if you need the extra short you have to go with the spirit 1.0 plus um, the actual length of the shaft is measured a little bit differently than a traditional outboard so just because you have a short shaft and a gas outboard does not mean you'll have to use a short shaft in an electric outboard so the way that these shafts are measured is from the top of the bracket here down to a center line with the propeller. So for instance, on the extra short shaft, it has a 20.7 inch shaft. So that's from the top of the bracket there down to the center line of the prop. On the short shaft, we have a 24.6 inch shaft. Again, that same measurement. And then on the long shaft, we have a 29.5 inch shaft here. Um, so that's one piece of information that you'll need. The other is the height of your transom. So you want to make sure that the propeller is going to sit below the bottom of the transom uh, and that there's a little bit of clearance. E-Propulsion recommends kind of four inches between the tip of the prop, if it's vertical, and the bottom of the hull. But we're going to go over to a few boats today and show you how you can measure that. And we'll put a few of these motors onto those boats so you can see how they sit. All right, so now we'll run through an example of how you can measure your transom height and figure out your shaft length. So this is important because if your shaft is too short for your transom, you're likely to run into issues with cavitation, especially if it's rough or there's somebody in the bow of the boat which brings the stern up. On the other hand, if your shaft is too long, you lose a little bit of performance and you're also more likely to run aground and you're drawing more water than you need to. So we'll show you how we can do it on our whaler right here, uh, and then you can do that on your own boat as well. Uh, earlier, I mentioned the shaft length guide from E-Propulsion. We have a printed out version here. And what's great is they, not only do they include the lengths of all of these shafts, but they include their shaft length recommendation based on uh, your transom height. So we'll reference that when, uh, when we take a measurement here. So first thing we're going to do is measure our transom. So we're going to put the top of the tape measure on the top of the transom and then just go straight down to the bottom of the hull and we're at just over 20 inches, about 20 and a quarter. So if we come over here, look at our shaft length guide, we can see that if your transom is higher than 19.7 inches, you need the long shaft. So we're right on the cusp here, we're just over, um, but we need to go with the long shaft. And typically, when in doubt, if you're not sure, or it's a little bit too close, you're better off going with a longer shaft than a shorter shaft. Um, but to kind of illustrate that, we're gonna put both of these motors on the boat here. So first we'll try the short shaft, which again, the long is the recommendation, but we wanna show you how that would look. Tighten up our clamps. All right, and then we're gonna come down here and take a look. And what we can see is that the tip of the prop, when it's vertical, 
is not below the transom here. All right, so it's close. This would work, but you're likely to have cavitation issues, right? As the prop spins, the water comes out from behind the hull. Um, so now I'll show you how it looks with the long shaft. All right, and again, just gonna tighten up our clamps here. And then we'll take a look at this one. So now, if we get down low, we can see that there is a bit of a gap between the top of the propeller and the bottom of the transom. Right? If we try and kind of run the line from the transom back here, we see that there's a couple inches. Um, and e-propulsion recommends about a four inch gap there. And that's pretty much right what we have. Um, so this would be a pretty good choice for uh, a Tony Anderson transfer. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to figure out what shaft length you need if you're putting your motor on a regular transom, right? So this is dinghies, aluminum boats, things like that. Sometimes it gets a little bit more tricky with sailboats, depending on where the bracket is positioned, um, and if that bracket goes up or down, what the transom shape is like. So we're gonna head outside now, we're gonna measure a few other transoms like this, and then we're gonna take a look at a sailboat that we have and show you which shaft length we like to use on them. Um, if you have any questions, if you have a sailboat, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to um, help you figure out what shaft length you need. But for now, let's head outside and take a look at some other boats. All right, so we've got a crest liner here. Um, again, standard transom. So we'll measure just like we did before. Now, this one is about 20 and a quarter inches to the bottom of the skeg here slightly less to the bottom of the hull. Generally, it's a good idea to include that skeg as part of the hull when you're thinking about this. Um, so this would also be a long shaft, just like the whaler that we did inside. All right, so we have two other boats here. Uh, a friend of mine is leaving these over here for the winter. Um, so they're flipped upside down on a trailer, but again, that doesn't matter for our purposes. So this first little dinghy on top, measure the transom there. That one is just a touch over 15 inches. So that would be extra short as well. And then this duck boat here, this one is about just under 13 to the bottom of the hull and then 15 and a half to the skeg there. So that would be a good candidate for extra short as well. All right, so the last boat we're gonna show you here is a 19 foot Flying Scott Day Sailor. It has this motor bracket, which is fixed, right? It does not move up and down like some sailboats have. Um, and it's a similar process, but it works a little bit differently. So what I've done here is I've locked the tape measure off at 15.7 inches, which is the cutoff between short or extra short. So if we put the top of the tape measure on the top of the transom bracket, and then you look kind of parallel to that mark, you can see that this is just below the bottom of the hull. Um, so that's where the tip of the prop would be on the extra short. So we're gonna put that on here and show you what it would look like. All right, so if you look from behind the prop towards the boat there, you can see that the tip of the prop is just barely underneath the bottom of the hull. So we've actually tried this uh, shaft length on this boat out on the water. And when there were two people sitting towards the stern of the boat, it worked fine. But once one person went up towards the bow and the stern came up out of the water a little bit, we had cavitation issues. So that's why it's important to have a little bit of a gap between the top of the prop and the bottom of the hull. So now we'll show you how it looks with the short shaft, which is, by the way, what we do recommend if you have a Flying Scott. All right, so now if you get down here, you can see that the prop is well underneath the bottom of the hull uh, and you won't have any cavitation issues.
So this boat's a really good example of kind of what to do if you're right on the borderline. Again, we recommend short uh, over extra short if you're kind of on the border there, going with the longer shaft length if it's close to make sure you're avoiding those cavitation issues. But your individual scenario may have an impact on which one you go with if you're right on the border there. So if that's the case, feel free to reach out. Um, if you have any questions on shaft length, leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. It goes a long way for us. And happy electric boating.